Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Another day on the road. We've got some more haul items here, some picks, some actual sourcing trips that we took. Again, we have about 400 miles of road travel just in sourcing stops. So altogether, we probably stopped at, say, 60 different locations, many in the same day, many in the same town. Um, and I'm just going to show you some more of the interesting items here. Let's hop over to Out in the Wild, and we're going to show you where we found the items at first. So here we are. I believe this is a vendor's mall, not necessarily an antique one, but this is in, uh, well, it's actually outside Gaylord, which is north of Dearborn, Detroit, heading up towards Saginaw. Um, I looked through everything, so these are 78 records, pretty much just junk standard. Um, it's a shame that danger sign in the back wasn't metal, but it's plastic. Uh, and I double-checked just to make sure. The binder was ruined. Sometimes those binders can be worth money. Most of the rest of this stuff is just pretty much priced at about what it's worth. It's quite a few vendors, too, so you can see all kinds of different items they have. This was a box of some sort. I'm not sure if it was original or not. It's hard to tell. I didn't want to spend the time for what it was. Wouldn't have been worth a ton even if it was original. So, And you can see brand new stuff in here as well, two crafters and things along that line. Now, this booth here, the gentleman who actually owned it and ran this stuff in here was in there. Unfortunately, I had to cut it off. There's country music playing really loud in the background. And uh, literally, I was talking to him while he was in there. He's standing to the left. You can see him when I just walk in there. You'll see the item that I found right here. It's the only item in his entire booth that was really worth it. Um, and this is a relay here. You can see the tag on it as well. So kind of get a gist on what he had on it. Uh, 25 originally. He marked it down to 20. Uh, and I asked him if he'd take any better on it. He would not. Um, he said that was the lowest he would go. I know the value on it, so either way, it's a good item to get at that price. I actually set this down and wanted to go double-check pricing on it, so I left the booth here in just a minute. You'll see me set it back down. And then I came back about four or five minutes later and just grabbed it at that price. So we found quite a few things at this one booth. Never been in here before. It's kind of out, off the beaten path, out in the middle of nowhere, in all honesty. And there was probably around, say, 100, 120 uh, vendors in the shop as well. So it had a lot of stuff to look at. I touched most of the basics here. So it would probably be an area that I personally would at least come back to once or twice more just to make sure I didn't miss anything. First item, as you can see, again, this is a Western Union Telegraph Company. Now, let me see if you can see that in there. Now, right there, you should be able to see it. WU Western Union Tel Telegraph and then Co. Company. Now, this is a relay uh, from a relay station. This would have been in a Western Union Telegraph office circa 1890s, maybe a hair earlier. Excellent, excellent, excellent condition. Nice paint, very heavy, original, no repairs, no nothing. All original pieces, everything that you would want to find in one of these is in this. Typical one and just so-so condition of these. Goes for about 40 bucks or better. This one I'm probably going to put around $75 on it due to the condition. Everything still moves, works. The wires are all correct. Everything, again, is just the way you want it. I paid $20. He originally had $25 on it. It was marked down in his booth down to $20. It would probably have sat there for a long time had I not seen it. I'm going to make a pretty decent return on this one here. I'll at least double my money if nothing else. So I'll at least get 20 bucks on the bottom end. I, I am very confident I should at least take home 55 to 65 on this one, though. So again, more like $40 profit or so after all said and done. Really interesting items. If you haven't seen these, I've shown these in many haul videos. You might have to go back a little while. I haven't shown the last few I got. Um, but again, these are nice, excellent inspection marks. Again, this is primo quality on these um, the only issue is a little tiny uh, crack right there in the surface there was probably another item mounted there you can see a little screw hole um, so something is missing someone probably just disconnected a piece that had a wire running to another unit which is typical there's another one here probably a screw down for a wire nothing to worry about somebody will just replace that when they mount it in and it'll be all set ready to go either way nice example here um, and i've got parts and pieces that we even collect from these so anyway good good piece so this is just another spot in this same vendor's mall all these tables that they had had tons of little bags and packets of 
paper of various types. You'll see what I found here in just a few moments. Everything on here was reasonably priced. Most of it wasn't worth much. You could have made a few bucks on some of it, but I wasn't really looking just to get a couple things, just to make three, four bucks on something. Uh, but I, again, I was lucky enough to find some items. It's stuff like this that people just seem to walk past thinking there's just junk. Again, most of it wasn't worth much, and the rest of it really wasn't worth anything. But I picked out that diamond in the rough here. It's just uh, paper. It's just everywhere. And as you see, I got this from the same place that I found the Telegraph Relay at. Now, this was 50 cents for these business cards. And I talk about business cards, um, you know, and people just don't think it's something you can find vintage good ones. Not only was it a pack for 50 cents, I got four of them. It's from a small town in Ohio. Nice images on it. I've actually had the Ford Tractor, red Ford Tractor sign, the neon sign, both sides of a six foot sign that we ended up getting 2000 for the pair for so I know that symbol very well anything with the red tractor on it like that the red Ford tractor goes for good money so again I've got four of these I'm probably looking at around 25 or better a piece 50 cents for this as you can see let me put this so you can see it a little better but 50 cents on that piece there so anyway real good one there $1.50. I guess I can't pass it up for $1.50. dollars are mint in the box. $15, 20 buck profit. And another good item, as you saw. Now, this was $1.50. Let me see that you can see it. $1.50. This is from the booth that I found it in. It's sealed. It's uh, vintage. Let me see what the year is on this. Uh, 90s, I would gather. Uh, let's see what we can see. Oh, geez. Where's the date on this? Yeah, sometimes one of these newer toys, I can't seem to find a date all the time. I love the dated items. Again, I'm guessing 90s if I remember right. Uh, I saw this when my kids were really small. Um, but there's four figures in here. It's sealed. It has the Mattel tape still on the sides. Everything that you want to find in something like this. These go for, say, 20 to 45 bucks, I would imagine, based on prior sales. Now, if the box was a little better on this, I'd send it to Amazon and probably get 75 out of this. But let's show you what's in it. Uh, it's just a typical four-pack of characters, um, which you would expect to find from the movie. I remember the movie. Um, really nice assortment here. So, again, I'll probably get, say, 25 or 30 buck profit out of this one here. Do you have the film to go with it? That's from a high school or something. All the books. How to run a train. All of them. Right. Something like on the bus. I wonder what he wants. Remind me, and we'll check this out on the way out. I don't want to walk around with it. Oh, and it's even a manual for an engine. Huh. I'm going to ask him. I think, I yeah. think they're yours over here. I think yeah. we've talked a couple of times. you got a book box of, like, train books? Yeah. How much are those? You want the whole box? Yeah, how much are the whole box? I'll do that. Can I? Um, in fact, I'll just run it out to the car. Let me give you a 20. And as you saw, 20 bucks for this box here. We're going to pull it out. The first book alone should get me 20 bucks back. This is a manual for a locomotive engine. Um, as you can see, it actually has an embossed engine circa 1940-ish. Not only was there one of these, 
There's a second one as well for a different model. Same basic thing, locomotive engine. Uh, and then there's a bunch of instruction books too on maintenance instructions for Pennsylvania Railroad. Uh, this one was issued in 62. The minimum I will get on every single one of these books is 10 bucks, minimum. I have never sold one of these kind of books for less than 10. They show up a lot. So again, don't, don't think that these are oddball things. I get a lot of people say, you're never going to find this stuff. This is just all fantasy and stuff. It's not fantasy. In my world where we shop, this is what I find. I find this stuff all the time in the realm of places I go to. I do not go to garage sales. I haven't been to but one or two this entire year. I don't really go to thrift stores anymore because most of the ones around here have either closed or scanned, sort, and auctioned their own items. So I go to flea markets, antique fairs, antique malls, and festivals instead if I go somewhere. Or I go to a picker. Again, 20 bucks for this. Each one of these I'm expecting to put 34.50 on and I will take what I can get. 15 or 20 bucks is probably average. So 30 bucks I will get back on just these first two. Again, as I said, these show up all over the place. I find these at almost every estate sale. You're going to run into something like this, it seems. Maybe not everyone, but it's so darn close that it's it's not even funny. So 30 bucks on the first two, another 10 at least, another 10 another 10 now this one's brake equipment for diesel electric switch uh locomotives and it's westinghouse air brakes rather interesting topic here 1953 these go back into the 40s some of these department of transportation federal railroad administration laws rules and instructions government printed one early uh 50s it looks like 10 15 bucks minimum laws rules same basic thing uh, this one's from 1972, so we're a little later. Uh, there's probably $200 or more in this type of thing. Uh, interesting book, too. Uh, Engine Man's Operating Manual, Model E8, General Motors. Uh, it's literally got a breakdown on it. Stuff you just won't see. The owner's name's on here. It shows pictures, the whole works. Leather-ish cover on these. This one might be 20 or 30 bucks. I'm going to expect that a few of these will go for 30 or 40 bucks a piece. There's probably 20 in here at least, 10 bucks a piece, $200 return. Uh, again, these are all railroads so far, all I see. CD type air compressor for locomotive service, 1952. These are some that I don't even see uh, specifically as well. So a few of these may be a little scarcer than most. This one has schematics. Uh, for it that actually fold out as well. So these are pretty good ones here also. This is brake equipment for switching locomotives again. Another one of these, but for different uh, locomotives. So again, it doesn't matter specifics on them. Um, I just sell them all. I list them up for say 45, 50 bucks um, or down from there. This one again has schematics in it that fold out. Quite a few of them in this one. This is an air brake examination question and answers for train men, Pennsylvania Railroad, 1961. And another manual here. This one's, I think, the original one for that as well. So again, there's a bunch of stuff in here for almost nothing. More schematics here. And this one really blows out here. There's a bunch of them in here. Every detail you could imagine on running these things. Really interesting in my book. Um, air brakes again. More booklets. Preliminary uh, engineer men's operating manual, GP7. 1980 railroad manual. Let's see what else we got in here. Another operating manual. Here's a nice thick one too. Locomotive and brake equipment as well. Another one. Westinghouse air brakes. 1957. Uh, there's a, another book in here. Um, and this is... The box is pretty cruddy, but... Central Geography. Uh, this is probably nothing at all. Yeah, this is nothing at all. So anyway, regardless of whatever else was in the box, the other junk that was in there, this lot right here for 20 bucks, you know, you're talking at least 10 bucks a pop, probably more than that. I, I pretty much guarantee you that some of these are going to go for more than that. Also, one last thing I'll show you. Um, it's not in the hall here, but we get these all the time. Here's a couple more of the uh, music boxes. Now this one's damaged, so I'm gonna remove it from this cardboard here. It happened to still say what it was, so luckily the, the cardboard or the wood back is still there. Uh, here's another Japanese movement here. Could have danced all night, it's written on the back. This one's missing the key, it doesn't turn. Uh, this one doesn't turn as well. But again, I'm going to go over this in a Patreon video for those in Patreon. You're going to get to see how to fix these and bring them back online where you can get some money back out of them. 
Here's another one here as well. Uh, you can see it's a little different version than the other one. This one's pretty decent, but it doesn't spin again. We're going to fix these in Patreon. So anyway, hopefully that gave you some ideas and some of the items that we look for, the prices that we pay, um, and just that this stuff is out there. Don't give up. Don't think you can't find it. Don't go to the same sources you're going to if you're not finding good stuff. Switch up. Look outside the box. Think of other locations you've never been to that may yield something. You could just run into a good place that's just going to be your dream come true sourcing location. So don't give up. Look outside the box. And I promise you that the stuff that we show you here is all accessible items that you can find in the wild wherever you may live. Hopefully that gave you some ideas. Hopefully that gave you some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.